Hello, YouTube land. Uh, Uncommon Ramen here. Uh, I think in my previous, like, two videos, I completely forgot about my reminders, but uh, if you like my videos, please hit that like and subscribe button. And also, if you want to see them as they uh, get posted onto the interwebs, uh, hit the bell icon. And finally, if you feel the need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Uncommon Ramen uh, with a capital U and a capital R. I do all this in my free time, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this content to you more often. All right, so it is Friday. As of the filming of this video, we have March of the Mach Machines Aftermath. Uh, these are epilogue boosters. First time they've ever done anything like this. Uh, this is a pretty infamous set because uh, obviously a few days before the a few days before the uh, release of the first March of the Machines. Uh, somebody spoiled a collector's booster opening of this set, and, uh, you know, it, it it pretty much spoiled about 80% of the set, maybe more. Uh, there's only 50 cards in this set, um, so we're not talking about a huge sampling. So I'm not going to go into the collector's box because it's pretty, much, pretty obvious if you watch that video what's in the collector's box. I kind of want to see what the epilogue boosters have in them. I'm not really sure what's in there. They never got spoiled. Um... What it shows here is that you have a combination of one to three cards of rarity, rare, or higher, which is kind of nice, and two to four uncommons, uh, one to two cards of any rarity are traditional foil, and traditional foil showcase mythic in 1% of boosters. But how many... Okay, so there's... 24 boosters in here and six cards per pack. Okay, so this is like a super mini uh, product. Um, if you're not aware of the um, whole thing behind this, a lot of the Planeswalkers uh, in here no longer are Planeswalkers. They have lost their sparks. So if you read the storyline, um, what it basically comes down to is when Elspeth... Uh, planes walked away with the Silex and it um, detonated in the Blind Eternities. Uh, it fundamentally changed the way that magic, I guess, flowed in the Blind Eternities. And so certain Planeswalkers' sparks were, uh, I wouldn't say extinguished, but just outright lost. Um, there's no telling whether they will get their sparks back. Who knows? Um, the Nahiri storyline showed that her spark had been retained inside of a Heteron, um, but it was destroyed um, mostly because of her own stupidity. Um, but who knows? Uh, also, this is kind of in line with what Wizards of the Coast wants to do. They aren't necessarily phasing Planeswalkers out, but they do want to move away from them as a... Um, well, as as a large portion of each set, you get four to five Planeswalkers a set, sometimes more than that, and I'm hoping that we're going back down to like one or two Planeswalkers a set, but I guess we'll see uh, what happens with that. Uh, there's going to be quite a few in here. Uh, Sarkhan Vol, um, Nahiri, Nissa, Karn, uh, Kiora, Samut... Um, Obnixilis are a few that have lost their spark. Calyx. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a couple cards here. Deification. Uh, obviously Training Ground. I think everybody who is anybody is looking for Training Ground because that card used to be $40 and it only had the one printing. Now we have a reprint, so that's kind of nice. Um, I'm looking for Calyx. And I am also looking for uh, Tyvar, who also no longer has his spark, so... You know, we got Tyvar as well, who is sparkless. Uh, this set has no commons. Um, there are only uncommons, rares, and mythics in this set. So, that's something to keep in mind here. Um, I think out of everything that I mentioned that I'm looking for, Training Grounds is probably the most expensive card out of it. I'm really not looking for a whole lot in this set. There was, like I said, only 50 cards. We'll see what, what happens here. <clears throat> so we got the Death Rattle Oni. Feast of the Victorious Dead. Metropolis Reformer. Sigarda Font of Blessings. Actually, this was one of the cards I was looking for. And we got it in foil. 
Very nice. This one's an actually really interesting card. Other permanents uh, you can draw have Hexproof, and you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you can cast Angel Spells and Human Spells from the top of your library. This is really good for Human Tribal. It's really good for Angel Tribal. It's really good if you want to do a, a mixture of the two. Um, and it only costs four, so that's really cool. We got Blot Out in a foil uh, showcase. This is an uncommon. I didn't know they were going to do... Uh, Uncommons in the set in the showcase. That's really cool looking. Two and a black target opponent exiles a creature or planeswalker they control with the greatest. That's kind of cool. That's cool. And then we have a Kraken token. I like that. <laughs> uh, Kraken tokens. 1-1 one, one with trample. Oh, I know what this is for. That's for the Segovia. All right, we're just going to keep jumping through these. Uh, there's 24 packs in here. Um... As of the filming of that first video prior to the release of, um, we got the Tranquil Frill back, March of the Machines, uh, most of this got spoiled already. Another blot out, only this time in, uh, normal. The Reckless Handling in Showcase. This is, a so, the original art, the, uh, non-Showcase art, is the, uh, moment that Nahiri's spark... Uh, got shattered in the Hedron, and that was because she decided to be obstinate, and instead of let Ajani help her, she goaded him, partially because, for whatever reason, she assumed he was there to kill her. I'm not really sure what she was going through. She, She's a whack job sometimes. I'm not a big fan of Nahiri. I was kind of hoping Nahiri would die in uh, All Will Be One. Because she is absolutely one of my least favorite planeswalkers. But oh, there you go. The reckless handling, normal art. So that was the Hedron that had her spark in it that gets shattered. And then she basically vows that she will make sure that her plane is safe from planeswalkers, which she doesn't have anywhere near the power to do that. So I'm not really sure what she's going to do. I'm, I'm assuming she's going to become a villain at this point. I'm not 100% sure about that, because I know that Nyssa and Chandra are trying to get back to, well, I guess Nyssa is the one that's trying to get back to Zendikar, Chandra is just following her because, you know, Chandra loves her. We got ourselves a Gold Forge Thopterix. This indicates that Hotly and Sahili are far away from each other. Hotly and Sahili did not get printed in this set as Sparkless, so I don't know if both of them lost their spark or if only one of them lost their spark or why they are so far away or if they're only far away because they're taking time to um you know uh fix their planes before they see each other again i'm not really sure what's going on with this one next up we have pia nalar uh console of revival um uh, very cool card uh, it's the first time in a while that we see pia nalar since kaladesh i think so that's very cool. We have Coppercoat Vanguard and Tolarian Contempt in Showcase with an Incubator. Looks like the tokens are still just going to be March of the Machine tokens, which means likely there aren't any unique tokens in here. Of course, I don't know for sure. Um, I did read the cards prior to this, but my ability to retain that knowledge is going to be fairly limited. Uh, Undercity Upheaval. We've got Rocco Street Chef. So a new printing of Rocco. We have another Undercity Upheaval in foil. We have Harnessed Snubhorn in his um, showcase. I love the... Uh, the um, Ixalan Showcase. I'm super excited for um, Caverns of Ixalan just because of that showcase. We got Teferi's uh, Talent Emblem, which is super cool. Okay, we got a Markov Baron. Followed by a Campus Renovation. 
and a training grounds. I'm so excited for this. Anybody who plays Slivers is going to be pretty excited about this because this is outright cheaper than Hearthstone and in some cases arguably just better than Hearthstone. Um, but, you know, some people just play both. Um, so excited to see this training grounds. Really wanted that card. So excellent. We pulled the training grounds. Got ourselves a filter out and a uh, showcase gold forged Thopterix. And then we got, oh, trash. Awesome. They do ads on the back of the tokens. So there is zero reason why they have to have an entire card devoted to ads. Like, that's just a waste of cardboard, guys. Coppercoat Vanguard. Talarian Contempt. Dranith Ruins. This is the only land, if I remember correctly, in the entire set. Of course, again, it's only 50 cards, but hey, very cool. We got Campus Renovation and Foil. Then we got Sigarda, Font of Blessings. So this is, uh, we already pulled one of these, but now we have the showcase with the really awesome um, Midnight Hunt showcase. I, I personally like the border. Uh, and I don't know if a lot of people liked it. I liked it a lot. And we have a 3-1 one, one, or three, one, Trample Haste Elemental. Another incubator here. All right, we got ourselves a Colgan Warmonger. A Cosmic Rebirth. I'm, I'm not sure if this is a representation of the rebirth of the World Tree. Um, it says here, when all stories find their ends, a new one shall begin. So it doesn't really reference what the rebirth is. Um, but I want to say that it's possibly the uh, World Tree uh, being reborn. Or, you know, any numerous other things. Uh, Spark Rupture. Spark Rupture. So this was uh, the indication that certain people uh, just outright lost their spark. Got another Markov Baron in foil, and we have a Death Rattle Oni in the showcase. And actually, that is really freaking cool art. Wow. I like that. And like I said, the Incubator. This set was kind of, I don't know how people are receiving the set, but I will say that uh, it feels kind of like they had more cards than they expected in March of the Machines. They had no choice to break it into two sets, and this one just being a really tiny one. But they could have just done like they did way back in the day when I first started, where they did three sets devoted to a single storyline. I, I don't know. And I know that... that Realistically, if you think about it, Phyrexia, and all, Phyrexia all will be one and March of the Machines and March of the Machines Aftermath does indicate three sets of one storyline, but they were all kind of their own storyline in a sense. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, we got Animist Might. Uh, we got Feast of the Victorious Dead. We have Nissa, the resurgent animist. So you can see right here uh, where the Planeswalker symbol has a big crack through it. Um, just indicating that this person has, in fact, lost their spark. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I know that uh, a lot of these planeswalkers that have lost their spark have been having a hard time dealing with it, Nahiri specifically. Oh, we got Deification. All right, Deification and Foil. Um, deification is an interesting one. You choose a uh, planeswalker type, so by name, and then... Um, it gets some seriously good benefits. Uh, the reason I, I, I wanted it myself is because it is in white and I am running a mono white um, uh, Super Friends that is basically Oops All Gideon. And this works really perfectly in that. So I was really super happy to see that. Got a uh, showcase Undercity Upheaval. Uh, as of now, Vraska and Jace are still unaccounted for. And we have an Elemental. But as far as I know, the remaining Planeswalkers are accounted for besides them. Here we got ourselves a Death Rattle Oni, a Harnessed Snubhorn, Urborg Scavengers, a Colagon Warmonger, a Cosmic Rebirth. This is why, again, so it has the Kaldheim... Um, uh, showcase border. This is why I assume that it's the rebirth of the world tree. And then finally we have a zombie token. I 
I do hope that this is the last time that they do epilogue packs, because epilogue packs don't make a whole lot of sense, like... Alright, we got Sarkin, Soul of Flame. Uh, so again, lost a spark. Um, doesn't make them any less powerful by comparison to other mages, but just in general, by comparison to Planeswalkers, they definitely lost a lot of power. So we got Feast of the Victorious Dead here, and another uh, Showcase Cosmic Rebirth, followed by an Incubator token. All right, we've got Blot Out, Goldforged Thopterix, Nahiri's Resolve. This is where she basically decides that uh, she's going to protect Zendikar all by herself. I don't know how without her powers, but I mean, she still has her powers, but without, you know, the planeswalking ability. Good luck. Uh, Markov Baron in the Crimson Vow border. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like this border. I'm, I'm okay with it. I think it looks fine. We have a warrior. All right, we got Undercity Upheaval, Campus Renovation, Rebuild the City. This is good for uh, anybody who's doing like a Jund Lands Matter or, you know, like Wind Grace type deck. Uh, Jirina, Dauntless General in Foil. Very cool. Colgun Warmonger in the uh, Trakir um, treatment. I, it makes me curious if we're going to go to Trakir again, which would be really interesting because I didn't play during that time. <laughs> The entire trick here block I missed. Sort of. I didn't play uh, with any real um, commitment. All right, we got Leyline Immersion, followed by Animist Might, uh, Filter Out in Showcase, Ixalan Border, and a Frexian Hydra with Lifelink. That's the new. Uh, Worm coil engine that takes a heck of a lot more to get rolling. Colgun Warmonger. Markov Baron. Sigarda Font of Blessings. I pulled three of these. It's crazy. Uh, Talarian Contempt. I guess it's not really crazy. All right. Joel Rail, Voice of Zulfir in a retro frame. So it's funny, this is actually going to be the second time that Joel Rail has a retro frame because the original printing in Prophecy was where we first see Joel Rail. Another incubator. All right, we got a Cosmic Rebirth. We're going to see a lot of the same common uncommons in here because, like I said, the set isn't that big. It's the mythics that we're going to be missing a lot of as we go through here. All right, we got Arnie Metalbrow, uh, no longer broken brown. Now he's got the horn of a Phyrexian in his head too, which I don't understand how he's still functioning as a being, but you know. Uh, we got Copper Coat Vanguard in an awesome looking Ixalan frame. That's <laughs> that's really cool looking. <sighs> Another ad card, like I don't understand that. We are more than halfway through the box. Um, I got the two rares I wanted. That's cool. Let's see if we can get that mythic, or the two mythics I'm looking for. Calyx and, uh... Oh, we got another deification. Cool, cool. Uh, we got ourselves a Goldforged Thoptrix. Another Coppercoat Vanguard, which I'll take, because I like this art. And then a treasure. Uh, like I said, we're looking for, um... Tyvar and Calyx. Uh, only because those are things that I'm going to immediately use in a deck. Nivmazet Supreme. Nivmazet has so many printings. So many different printings, too. I think there's five different Nivmazets. There's Nivmazet Firemind. Nivmazet Draco Genius. Nivmazet, is it Paragon? Or is it Perun? Nivmazet Perun, that's what it was. Nivmazet Reborn, and now Nivmazet Supreme. That's crazy. This dragon is almost as printed as Nicol Bolas. All right, Reckless Handling, Feast of the Victorious Dead. That's a really cool art. All right, we got an Elemental. How many Mythics did we pull? 
Well, that's sad. We've only pulled two mythics. It's 24 packs, pulled two mythics. Yeesh. We pull one more mythic, we're about, what, 10%? <laughs> that's pretty bad. Uh, all right, Samet, Vizier, Vizier of Noctamoon. Uh, another mythic, um, another sparkless planeswalker. Uh, of all the planeswalkers, though, he seems, based on his quote there, not to care so much that he does not have his, or she does not, I don't remember if it's it, he or she, um, uh, have their spark anymore. Followed by a foil cosmic rebirth, a animist might in the retro frame. I like that one. That one actually looks really cool. And then a spirit token. Spirit. We're not looking good on the uh, mythic front here. It kind of seems very light. We do have a collector's box. I, I wasn't going to open that on camera, but maybe we will. Vesuvan Drifter. Uh, we got ourselves another blot out. So that was a disappointing little pack there. Lots of incubators. Campus Renovation. Coppercoat Vanguard. Jarena Dauntless. Dranith Ruins. And Campus Renovation in the Showcase. I like that this is what they chose to be the Strixhaven showcase, despite the fact that the entirety of the Strixhaven set was not in this. It was only the Mystical Archives. But, you know, whatever. Uh, we got another incubator, yeah. Okay, we got four packs, this one included, left here. Dang, that's a lot of incubators. All right, we got Jorail, Voice of, of Zulfir, uh, normal. Got blot out. We got reckless handling and a incubator. I guess these are fast packs. All right, we have Kaligan Warmonger. We got Cosmic Rebirth. We got Open the Way. This is when uh, Nissa and Chandra decide to jump through a rift in Zulfir to see where it takes them. Hopefully to... Uh... Oh, we got Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep. Uh, hopefully designed a car. Uh, this is a mythic in foil. Uh, this is the sparkless Kiora. Um, they didn't do... At least as far as I know, they haven't done a story for her, so I'm not sure how she's handling the lack of having a spark. But, you know... Think of the spark as a uh, privilege, if you will. All right. Okay, we got Tazri, stalwart survivor. Uh, upheaval in the Undercity. A retro frame animus might with the really cool foil. I like that. Reminds me of when I first started. Okay, last pack. I guess it doesn't. Foils hadn't existed when I first started. We didn't get foils till Urza's Legacy, I think. Uh, Snubhorn. We have Ayara's Oathsworn, followed by a Filter Out and a Plarg and Nasari. Plarg and Nasari in Showcase. Very cool. Um, yeah, cool. Not Mythic, but I think we got three Mythics in total. We no, no, we got four. We got four. So, four Mythics. Uh, that's, I guess that's not bad. Uh, I did get about 50% of what I was looking for, which is sad because I was only looking for four cards, but that is the deification and the, um, training grounds, which I can't sneeze at. Like I said, those were, the, uh, training grounds was really expensive for a while there. Uh, so that is going to be a, uh, epilogue booster box, 24 packs, six cards per pack. Um, a chance of up to three rares per pack, but, you know, if you've ever followed the set boosters, you know that the, the chances of having exactly three in a pack are pretty low. They're very low. Um, and it does have a, its fair share of showcase treatments in it. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, 
I know that not everybody is really excited about the showcases. Sorry, I'm doing this to check rarity. Um, but I do, uh, I do like the showcases for some reason, which is weird because when I was younger, I hated the idea of them changing frames. Anyway, that's all for Aftermath, um, March of the Machines. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Peace.